You look like a group of people who are ready to win an election. Well, it is great to be at a convention that believes in God Almighty. And with people who would never take a knee for our national anthem. I want to thank my daughter, Audrey, for her very kind introduction. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm proud of the, of the young woman that she has become. But I want you to think about this. She is now 21 years old. And for her entire life, only Republicans have been elected to statewide offices in Texas. Every person in this room deserves credit for that remarkable record. Well, it's great to be back right here in San Antonio, Texas. This, of course, is the hometown of my wife, Cecilia, and it's where we got married. And I think Cecilia has done a fabulous job as the first lady for the great state of Texas. Well, two months from today, we celebrate our 37th anniversary. Well, yesterday we hosted an anniversary of a different kind. We hosted an event commemorating Flag Day. And I want to recognize everyone who helped defend the freedom that our flag symbolizes. So if there's anybody in this room who has ever worn the uniform of our United States military, would you please stand or wave your hand so we can thank you for your support. Those people are terrific. Well, it is great to be at the largest Republican convention in the entire world. And I want to thank all of our delegates and volunteers who have worked so hard to keep Texas the greatest state in America. But here's the deal. Texas isn't great just by chance. Texas is great because of you, because of people who prove that anything is possible in the great state of Texas. People who rally for the cause of freedom, people who fight for our Texas values. Well, at this convention four years ago, I talked about those values. And I laid out a vision of an even better Texas, a vision, I might add, that led to a 20-point victory in the last election. Well, since then, we fulfilled that vision by keeping Texas on the path of prosperity. And I'm proud to tell you that as we gather today, Texas is better than it was four years ago. Now, there is no better example of that than our economy. With the Republicans that you helped to elect to the Texas House and Senate, we spurred our economy by cutting taxes and by cutting regulations. We invested in the largest road building program in the history of the state of Texas and we focused on developing a world-class workforce. Because of what we've done in the past four years, the Texas economy is stronger than it has ever been. For example, 
our unemployment rate is not just better than it was four years ago. It is better than it's been in 40 years. And our low unemployment rate has benefited all demographic groups in the state of Texas. African Americans, Hispanic Americans, uh, Asian Americans, women, Anglos, it doesn't matter what your race, religion, color, or creed is, if you are a Texan, the fact is you have a better chance at a higher paying job than you did four years ago. The result is that more Texans have jobs today than ever before in the history of our state. As of this morning, Texas has created 750,000 new jobs since I took office as governor of Texas. Let me put it this way. If you were to take every man, woman, and child who live in Amarillo, Waco, Tyler, Midland, and Beaumont, and combined together, they would not add up to as many new jobs created in Texas since I took office as governor. But it's more than just new jobs. It's what we do with those jobs. For example, the United States now leads the world in oil production with Texas leading the way. Because of Texas, America is now energy independent. Because of Texas, we will never again depend on foreign oil cartels for our energy needs. And of course, it's more than just oil. It's things like health care. Texas is home to the largest medical center in the entire world. And Texas is not just the home of technology giants. For five years in a row, Texas has been ranked number one in the nation for technology exports. Technolo Texas is number one in so many things, it's hard to keep count. Texas is number one for cattle and cotton. We're number one for sheep and goats. Texas is even number one for wool and mohair. If you were to combine all the goods and services produced by all the people and businesses in Texas, you'd see that we have an annual GDP of $1.7 trillion. Now let me put that differently. If Texas were its own country, we would have <laughs> Let me rephrase that. If Texas were its own country again, we would have the 10th largest economy in the entire world. The Texas economy alone is larger than Russia's economy. And that makes me more powerful than Putin. And I can tell you this, you had a lot more to do with the outcome of our last presidential election than did Russia. And of course, it's not just the economy that's doing well. The fact is our schools are doing better too. Our high school graduation rate 
It's not just better than it was four years ago. It is better than it's ever been in the history of the great state of Texas. We have more blue ribbon public schools than any state in America. And of the top 100 public high schools in the nation, more are in Texas than any other state. And higher education is better too. In the last four years, we have doubled the number of tier one universities in Texas. The minds that will power America's future are being educated in Texas today. And our communities are safer. To help that, we cracked down on human traffickers in Texas. We expanded our anti-gang task force so that we would arrest dangerous and treacherous gang members like MS-13 and put them behind bars. We sent the National Guard to help secure our border. And we banned sanctuary cities in Texas. But listen, we know that we could not keep our community safe without the support of our brave local law enforcement officials. To, to better support and protect our local law enforcement officials, the state of Texas provided them with rifle-resistant vests. And we made it a hate crime to assault a law enforcement officer simply because of the uniform they wear. And of course, we also support our firefighters and all of our first responders. To all of them, I want you to know, you have the enduring gratitude of the people of Texas, and you have a governor who has your back. So I ask all of you to join me in thanking the law enforcement officers, our firefighters, our first responders, who, all of them who put their lives on the line to keep Texas safe. They deserve that now more than ever because our first responders have been put to the test this past year. At Santa Fe High School, the police officers, they didn't cower. Instead, they ran toward danger. They engaged the attacker with gunfire and because of their bravery, they ended his evil acts. At Sutherland Springs, a good guy with a gun really did stop a madman from causing further mayhem. And during Hurricane Harvey, heroic first responders saved thousands of lives. They worked alongside our fellow Texans on a flotilla of Texans who were out there on things like kayaks, canoes, and bass boats rescuing their neighbors. The worst of storms brought out the very best of humanity. Now these events, these events could have ripped us apart. Instead, they brought us together. In times of tragedy, Texans unite.
We know that there is no earthly force more powerful than Texans responding to adversity. One day I will never forget is the day that I went down to Sutherland Springs on the day of the shooting. I hugged and I prayed with victims and their families. And yet even in the fog of this horrific tragedy, the people in Sutherland Springs, they looked me in the eye and they insisted. They said, Governor, do not let them use this to take away our guns. They understood the necessity of their individual right to keep and bear arms, not for hunting, not for sport, but to defend themselves. And I will guarantee you this, as long as I am governor, I will never allow your Second Amendment rights to be infringed. Now listen, as, as great as Texas already is, we know that there is more work that must be done if we are going to keep Texas the premier state in America. And that starts with reining in your property taxes. The Democrats want to raise your taxes. I'm running for governor to make sure that never happens. Many of you all are being crushed by skyrocketing property taxes. Some seniors are being taxed out of their homes. In fact, one candidate for governor hasn't even paid her property taxes. Well, to make it easier for everybody, I have already announced legislation to limit your property taxes and to give you the power to give you the power to fire your property tax appraiser and to elect a better one. I'm also running for governor to make our schools even better. I want to give our teachers the pay raise they deserve. And I want to end, once and for all, the Robin Hood scheme that has failed our students. We must also do more to support our veterans. On the day that I announced my re-election campaign, I also announced solutions for our veterans. Solutions that provide them with more job opportunities and provide our veterans with access to the health care they have earned. I'm running for governor to make our communities even safer. Now the Democrats, they want to eviscerate our ban on sanctuary cities. They are running on the open borders plan of George Soros. Not only will I enforce the ban on sanctuary cities, I will continue to secure our border. I will expand the crackdown on gangs like MS-13. And I will work to end human trafficking in Texas. Now, speaking of Democrats, there is nothing they would love more than to return Texas into the clutches of Planned Parenthood. I'm running for governor to keep Texas a pro-life leader.
Now, as you know, the Democrats also want to get rid of voter identification. I'm running for governor to pass even tougher voter fraud laws to prevent cheating and Ill illegal voting at the ballot box. Now, some people in this state, they act like they just don't believe in the exceptionalism that we have in Texas. The Democrats insist they can change all that by having this blue wave come across Texas. But come November, come November, we're going to show them that real Texas values are not up for grabs. A hundred and eighty-two years ago, just four blocks from right here, Texas exceptionalism, it rose from the ashes of the Alamo, where heroes died for Texas freedom. The fight for independence at the Alamo put Texas on the pathway to eventually become the premier state in America. But here's the deal. The heroes of the Alamo, they are long gone. Now it is your turn. Now it is up to you. You are the patriots who will determine the destiny of Texas. Your passion and your commitment are needed now more than ever. From now all the way until Election Day, we have to understand that what we're dealing with is about far more than just an election. This is a battle. It's a battle for the freedom that we inherited. It is a battle to protect our constitutional rights and to uphold the rule of law. It is a battle to limit the growth of government and let you keep more of your hard-earned money. It is a battle to preserve religious liberty and to ensure every child has a chance at life. It is a reminder that our liberty doesn't come from government, it comes from God Almighty. What we are dealing with is a battle for the soul of Texas itself. And I know that working together, we are going to write the next chapter in the extraordinary history of Texas. We are going to keep Texas red. We are going to keep Texas free, and we are going to keep Texas the greatest state in the United States of America.